And our next segment today sheds light on India's groundbreaking energy initiative, the One Sun, One World, One Grid project. This ambitious endeavor, unveiled at the COP26 summit in 2021, aims to forge a transnational energy grid connecting nations across the globe. While India's vision for a cleaner and more sustainable future has, of course, been gaining a lot of attention, what are the challenges that lie ahead and how does the initiative impact India's domestic policy? Let's face it, the entire question of solar power is becoming increasingly important. We've seen India has been able to meet many of its emission uh, targets that it has been setting for itself. There's plentiful sun. So if we can actually harness the sun, it's going to have another major impact. Well, joining us now to answer some of the questions around solar energy, who better to talk to than Dr. Ajay Mathur, who is the Director General of the International Solar Alliance. Right, Dr. Mathur, thank you so much for joining us. Such a pleasure. Before I come to some of the new initiatives, let's talk about the International Solar Alliance, which of course is something that India has been really championing from the very outset. How's it going? Is it living up to its full potential in your view? Well, we have 116 countries as members of the Solar Alliance. We have active programs in 55 of those 116 countries. We have moved from the membership being restricted to countries between the Tropics of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn to everybody who is a member of the UN. All of this is because of the interest that people have in the mission of the Alliance, which is to make solar as the energy of choice in our member countries. We've also been helped by wonderful tailwinds where in terms of the decreasing costs of solar that we have seen across the world. The challenge is that while there has been a decline in costs, while there has been an increase in the investments in solar globally, uh, in 2022, the amount of money that was invested in solar globally was approximately $250 billion. This compares favorably with the amount that was spent in solar, in, sorry, in energy, electricity production, even at the peak of the fossil fuel boom. So that's yeah. good, except that there is a huge skewedness that is hidden in these numbers. 70% of this investment has gone to the OECD countries and China. Mm. All of Africa is less than 3%. This creates a huge problem. The second skewedness is that the vast amount of this money has gone in for large solar farms, solar pumps, solar mini grids, solar home systems, solar rooftops have got much less money, probably less than half of what has gone for solar farms. Therefore, in order to make this as an energy source of choice for you and for me, it is important that we move money into countries where it is not going and into applications where it is not going. If I could just try and understand what you described as the tailwinds, and those are important tailwinds. It's one thing to say we must invest in solar and it costs a lot more than petrol or it costs a lot more than gas or hydropower or anything else. But when you look at the cost of solar right now, it's actually starting to compare, right? It's starting to become cheaper to have solar than to have fossil fuel. Well, certainly where solar electricity costs what? Two cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, if you buy, if you produce electricity on coal, it costs three and a half cents. Except that this production is when the sun is shining. So yeah. what happens at night? In countries like India, where the demand for electricity is still increasing, we have a problem of what do we do at night? Now, as long as you have adequate amount of thermal backup or hydro backup, that can meet the night demand. But till storage becomes cost effective, we have a challenge in ensuring that solar is available round the clock as the cheapest option. Now, if you compare it with, for example, diesel electricity, it's already cost effective. So for a lot of applications like cell phone towers, applications in island countries, applications in landlocked countries where diesel is the source, 
in all of those places, solar plus battery is already the cheapest option. So if I could just understand how that would work for a country like India, I guess logically you should first try and get your neighbors, get South Asia on board and then go further to the Middle East, to Southeast Asia, perhaps to Africa. Of course, some of our immediate neighbors are always likely to be somewhat difficult and somewhat challenging. So how do you do it? What, what is the way that this grid can be built out? No, what? Yes. And more than that, actually, because, yes, we are talking of connections from India to East Asia through Myanmar. On the other hand, we are also talking of connections to the Gulf by a connector between, say, Mumbai and Oman. But as I said, there are other talks of grid interconnections also happening, the East Saudi Arabia, Egypt connection, for example, or within Africa between the East African and the West African power pools. Uh, so as far as India is concerned, the linkages on the East and the West make great sense. But they are not the only discussions that are happening. We are seeing a number of other discussions happening also. Well, I guess one of the ways that this could be interpreted is that it's a really exciting renewable energy alternative to that whole One Belt, One Road initiative that is being put forward by China. Is it also being seen that way in countries like Africa that this is India reaching out uh, and the Solar Alliance reaching out with a really positive solution uh, which we can use to try and solve the energy problem for everyone, which is a good thing for the planet? So certainly there is a huge amount of excitement in the Europe, North Africa, India, Singapore, and onwards region. We have not yet seen a huge amount of excitement from the sub-Saharan African countries. That's something which is work in progress. All right, Dr. Mathur, the International Solar Alliance doing some really exciting things out there. Let's see how that grid also pans out and shapes out. Thank you so much for joining us.